Alright guys, it's been a while, um, so I'm now 22 weeks pregnant, and they're girls. <laughs> I've decided that their names are going to be Evelyn Hope and Magnolia Grace. It's been hell, to say the least. Um, my husband up and left to Texas, and he took our son with him, so I'm at home, alone, struggling to keep my sanity, because it's just so quiet. Listen. There's no laughter. There's no one calling for me. You know, my little boy is not asking me to make a spaghetti tornado with him. It's like... There's a huge piece of me that's just gone. And as time goes on and I get closer, it just gets worse. done it before and it was so scary <laughs> like I really don't want to have a c-section by myself I don't want to be in a hospital room by myself and I'm not just thinking like selfish too like me think like if their dad doesn't want to be there like he really must not care which hurts me even more and then I've been thinking about what happened when I had Graham there was a point when after he was born my heart rate dropped really low and I felt myself fading. And I'm so scared that it's gonna happen again. I try not to think about it, but it's always on my mind, especially with being alone. Because if something happens to me, What's gonna happen to my little girls? <laughs> if, you know, no one's gonna be there. Their dad's in Texas. And that's all I know, I just know he's in Texas. I don't know where. I don't know. I don't know, I have an address, nothing. And that's another thing that's been bothering is I don't know where my son is. <laughs> And I keep hoping that that he'll message me. He's coming to get us. It just doesn't happen. I have no family in support right now. That's the biggest fear I have. Is that one? These babies are gonna come early because of all the stress I've been under. 
going. I'm, I'm a student now. I work. I have to maintain a house. I have to find people to rent rooms to. I have to cook. Which I don't even do anymore. It's like instant soup and that's it. Because I'm just so busy and I'm so tired. So I'm scared that all the pressure and stress that I'm under is going to make them come early. Two, if that happens, I'm gonna go through it alone. And three, if anything happens to me, because I don't do well with surgery. So, I hope they're gonna be alone. And I want to tell my husband, like, I'm begging him to be here because. I would rather, I don't, if I feel like if I'm doing it alone and something happens to me, then I failed, because I wasn't able to provide something for my kids. And like, I want to know if anything happens to me. And I'm not able to provide a good life for our kids and let them let me go. At least I'll go knowing the last thing I did was to give my kids a fighting shot. And then I start thinking like, what happens if I have them early? They're in the NICU. I've been there before, and it's horrible. <laughs> I'm very scared. <laughs> My mind is like always racing. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I feel as though, like my my subconscious and my dreams are telling me that I am gonna be doing this alone, that I am gonna be <laughs> calling an Uber on the morning that I have to go to the hospital, and then I'm gonna walk in there and be just by myself the whole time. that I'm strong that I know that I can do it but I don't want to <laughs> with this whole pandemic thing like, there's not even a guarantee that he's going to be able to be there if he wants to be which I'm hoping like that's another thing they're due four days after his birthday Like this whole pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It's terrible. But women are doing this by themselves, and it is such a special moment. It is literally the. It's literally when a family becomes a family. It doesn't matter how many kids there are being born to those people. It is. That's when a family becomes one. You know. It's not just a husband, a wife, and, and a baby in her, inside her. It's, it's, it's a family at that point. And so many people are getting robbed of that. And it's so unfair. And I think about it, like, it just hurts me more that there are men who are missing out on it even though they want to be here, and my husband's just left. <laughs> I 
I've lost track as to how many things I cried. <laughs> and the sad part is nobody really understands. They're just like, if he can't appreciate you, then just let him go. You can do this. I know I can. But do I want to? No. <laughs> the fear that I have. Having these babies alone. <laughs> no one can really grasp it. Because everyone just thinks I'm being dramatic and that's, that's not it. <laughs> I really am scared. I would go through basic training over and over and over again. Instead of going and having a C-section by myself and then having twins by myself. <laughs> the house now is so cold because my family's not here. So I'm coming home to just a cold house. It's not even a home. I just be coming to a cold house where everywhere I look, there are memories. Like, for example, my son. Everything is exactly the way it was the last time he was here. I haven't touched his books or his toys. The last thing he wore I won't even wash it because it smells like him. <laughs> it's the closest thing I have to grasping on to what was a home. And <laughs> people I've been considering giving these babies up for adoption, but I feel like that's taking the easy way out. Like, on one hand, it's like, okay, if you're so worried, <laughs> then give them to somebody who can provide what you want to, but you can't. And it's not like I can't do it on my own. But what I wanted to give them was a normal family. What I've always wanted to give my kids. I don't know why it's so heavy on me right now, but it is. And I can't reach out to somebody. Like, for example, my husband's sister. It'll just be the same thing with her. Try not to think about it. Don't focus on the negative. But it's like, you're not experiencing it. Every day that goes by, you're not thinking and worrying about it. Am I going to have these babies alone? Am I going to make it through the surgery? How am I going to get to the hospital? How am I going to get home? How, who's going to be able, you know, who's going to support me? When I do get back to the house. I can't call my mom because I don't want to have anything to do with her. I'm sorry. I mean, my sister-in-law, all she has to worry about is how is she going to get back to Sweden or wherever the fuck she's going. She has no husband, no kids. She's free to come and go as she needs to. My mother-in-law was here the other day and she's like, it was bullshit that my son married you, got you pregnant, and then just left you for me to deal with, making me feel like I'm a burden, and I'm an annoyance and a nuisance, and something she has to deal with, as opposed to something, like, or someone, like, that's how it made me feel, like, you're just dealing with me, I'm your daughter-in-law, I'm pregnant with your grandchildren, and instead of being, like, open and loving and welcoming it's I have to deal with you 
because you have nowhere else to go. I feel like the blame's all put on me, but I didn't tell her son to up and leave. He literally made that decision on his own after he had left. And then he told me to come to Las Vegas and we spent a week there and we talked and we figured things out and how we were going to move forward after everything that happened. And then literally the day after, the morning after we got back home, because we got home at night, the morning after he was already going to leave. I didn't make that decision for him and I, I, it was a huge slap in the face because I was under the impression that we were going to be okay, that we were, gonna, we were committed to working things out. Because that's what he said he wanted to. And then he just left. He wants to know what I've accomplished. And I ask him, what do you want me to do? And I get nothing back. I tell him everything I'm doing right now, and he goes, it's not enough. part of me is like, you are perfect. I mean, you're not the prettiest and you're not the smartest or the fittest. You haven't made the best decisions. But the love that you can offer somebody and the support and just that genuine loyalty to somebody, anybody would want that. And my mind is like, if he, if he can't handle that, then he doesn't deserve it. Maybe I'm just weird. Like, I value emotional things more than I value material. I'm just really all over the place today. And I'm really scared. literally everything right now. And I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, I want to plan for the just in case I do have to do this on my own, but it's a painful <laughs> emotionally and mentally, because it's like accepting that I'm going to go through this alone. And then I feel like in a way I'm almost betraying my husband, because what if he does come? Like I feel like going on and moving forward like he's not going to be there is like... after Even after everything happened, like ev after, after everything that's happened, I still have hope. Which is why our daughter's Evelyn, her middle name is going to be Hope, because is it fit? I, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. So, if you guys know anybody who's expecting and they're alone. They may seem like they're okay on the surface, but maybe they're hurting just as much as I am. And pray for me. I guess I'll start talking to you guys more often because I... Once again, listen. Silence. I'm alone. Just pray for me, you guys. Good vibes. All that good stuff.